I think I'm going to need a little bit of your help today to start off. Is that okay? Are you willing to help? Good. Every year I've come back, and this is my fifth year, or my sixth year if you include the COVID year when I didn't come back. But I've started off on the first Sunday exactly the same way. But I'm getting old, I forgot what it was. Does anybody remember how I start off? Oh, you dirty things, you don't remember nothing I tell you. I saw, oh, it's coming back to me, it's coming back. I always start off the same way. I'm back! <laughs> and every year, my time here at Christ the King is bracketed by two of the most beautiful feasts of the year. I come on the Feast of the Epiphany, and this is at least the fourth year when the first Sunday I'm here is the Feast of the Epiphany, the second oldest feast in the church, and then I usually stay until right around Easter time, just a little after Easter. Or in other words, as long as it's Mesa Heaven, I'm here. <laughs> when it turns into Mesa Hell, which invariably it does, I'm out of here. I may not be the original snowbird, but I am a quintessential snowbird. This Feast of the Epiphany we celebrate today is a marvelous, marvelous reflection to us on God's love for all of us. The Magi, as you know, were not of the chosen people. They were not Hebrews. They were what the Hebrews would consider pagans or goyim. They would have been looked down upon. And yet, God revealed himself and revealed his son to these three magi. And you know what the meaning of that is? God loves us all just the way we are. And that applies not only to the ancient world of Jews and Gentiles, Jews and pagans, but it applies to you and me today. God loves us just the way we are. So many times we Catholics have the idea that we have to make ourselves worthy of God's love, that we earn God's love by striving to be as good as we can. That's placing the cart before the horse. God's love is a given. We don't earn it. There's nothing we can do to be worthy of it. We're not worthy of it. But it is given to us as a gift. And God loves us with our faults, with our weaknesses, Yes, even with our sins, God loves us just the way we are. But there's a corollary. And the corollary, corollary is God loves us too much to let us stay just the way we are. He is always calling forth the best in us. He is always calling us to grow. He is always calling us to open up. You know, when we face the disappointments of life, when we face the hurts, when we face the failures of our life, there can be pressure to close in on ourselves, to put our hand as well as our whole bodies in the form of a fist. That's not what God wants. God wants us rather to open up, to realize that in our own sufferings and failures, we cultivate an empathy and a sympathy for the limitations of other people, that we don't look down our long noses 
judging other people, but that we realize, I've been down that road too. I know what it is to be in sorrow. I know what it is to be weak. I know what it is to be a sinner, because I am all of these. Do you remember the first interview that Pope Francis gave after his election? And he did it to the editor of uh, Civilta Cattolica, which is a Jesuit publication. Of course, Francis is a Jesuit himself. And he was asked the question by the interviewer, a fellow Jesuit. He said, who is Jorge Bergoglio? And the Pope just looked at him. And the questioner got a little uh, nervous because the Pope wasn't answering. And he said, Your Holiness, do you mind me asking you that question? And Pope Francis says, no, no, no. He says, I'm just trying to formulate my answer. And then he comes out, and what's the first thing he says? Jorge Borgoglio is a sinner. Is a sinner. So aren't we all. But that's not the great truth. So many times in our mixed up, convoluted, narrow-minded ways of seeing things, we put our sinfulness center stage. That's not center stage. What is? The love of God, the mercy of God, the healing of God, the vocation, the calling forth of the best of us by God. That's the center stage. I can spend my whole life committing serious sin from morning to night every day of my life, and my sinfulness amounts to a drop of water in the ocean of God's mercy. That's the great reality. And that comes together in this beautiful, beautiful feast where the divinity of God is made manifest in a small baby. A few years ago, many years ago now, I had uh, a friend who was newly married. And he was, uh, worked for a major American corporation and at the time, even though he was a young man, he was in the upper levels of middle management. And his superiors, his bosses, wanted to groom him to get into upper, upper management. And so as part of this grooming process, they decided they were going to give him a four-year stint in Japan working with their overseas offices in Japan. They gave him some pointers. And they said, Japanese are a very, very specific society. Unlike the United States, they are, by and large, a homogeneous society. Everyone has the same nationality, the same ethnic background, the same language, the same culture. And that makes it very difficult for foreigners who are not familiar with the language, who are not familiar with the customs, makes it very difficult because the Japanese can be very reserved and seem to be very aloof, especially to foreigners. Well. This man and his wife went over to live in Japan, and they found it to be just the opposite of what they had been told. Everywhere they went, people came up to them with smiles on their faces, and they started talking to them. And they didn't understand a word they were saying, but they did understand what they were saying. People would even give them presents on the street. Total strangers coming up and giving them presents. Don't you want to know why? 
because everywhere they went, they had their newborn baby. And that baby melted all the reserve, all the prejudice, all the aloofness of people. The power of that little child to break down barriers. That gives you a beautiful, beautiful insight into the unfathomable wisdom of God to come on this earth as a baby. Who is afraid of a baby? Who is intimidated by a baby? Well, I might be intimidated if I had to change their diapers. That might be intimidating. But no, babies draw us. And that's the wisdom of God to come among us in helplessness. And so in this tiny baby is manifested, shines forth the fullness of the Godhead itself and the message that God would give us, I love you. And the corollary to that message the words that Jesus spoke over and over and over and over again in his public life. I love you. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of your God. Love your God. And the very desire you have to love God is itself his gift to you. He is the one who enables us to love him, who gives us the power and the courage to overcome the foolishness and the wisdom of this world and to see the full beauty of God's love in a tiny baby. Amen. <laughs>